Hey yo, what is up everybody? Welcome. I am back with another video in our game animation sample project. Uh, let's just keep working on it. I think it's high time for us to start with the NPC stuff. Uh, this should be fine to follow even if you're jumping into the videos here and haven't followed any of the earlier videos. Uh, I would highly advise anyone uh, that jumps in here to watch all of the rest of the videos just to get the basics of stuff that we have set up. But for the for the NPC specifically, it should be fine to just start from here as well. But anyway, uh, let's get into it. Before we start, just a quick fix for the AC combat logic uh, from the last video. Uh, your logic looks like this. So in the try lock on rotation function from the lock on system, uh, you have an input rotation bool that rotates the character if the input rotation is true. We don't want to do that. We actually just want to check if input rotation is true and not do anything if it is, because we're going to make a separate function that actually controls the rotation if there's input if input rotation is enabled. So just make a function that looks like this. Delta time is plugged in. If input rotation is true, we only do this rotation. So that means that we can input rotate when dodge rolling and stuff, even if we're not locked on. So that was an issue. See, tick functions. Uh, we're starting to add stuff up to tick, just a side note as well. It's probably, it's, it looks a lot because it's four functions, but it's still pretty fine because we have a bool that checks uh, before we do any logic. So this logic, it actually never executed at the same time. Uh, but it is, uh, so it is probably fine, but it's likely or it's 100% better to have it in C++ uh, or to do it as timelines. So we're probably going to move that over to C++ timelines for those who are interested in that in the future. But I'm not going to do that yet because it's a bit more advanced. Uh, anyway, let's get into the MPC stuff. So if you go to your MPC folder, uh, as I said, if you're new to the uh, channel and jump in right here, you can do whatever MPC. You can see most of the stuff is empty in our MPC. You can put the logic here if you want to, if you are not, don't want to use a component. But I'm using a component called MPC component. And basically you could just start from here and make your own blueprint class actor component and call it MPC component or whatever you want if you want to follow and do your logic inside of a component as well. But you, you could do it just straight in the MPC blueprint or in a component or however you want to do it. Uh, but we're going to start by making a blueprint structure called S and PC details. This one will hold our uh, non-object uh, data, so raw data stuff, mostly. Uh, it will hold one soft reference to the actual Blueprint actor class, and mostly otherwise data. Uh, so we're going to make a first one called name. This is what we're going to use to identify the row in the data table, so npc name going to add a string or text, text maybe, string, text, uh, mpc description, in case you have like an inspect window or like a uh, bestiary, whatever, where you want to update the text as you discover enemies. Uh, what else do we need? We need a actual reference to the blueprint. So, actor class. So this is variable is what we're gonna use if we want to spawn this actor at runtime. 
So it's not going to be a class reference, it's going to be a soft class reference. Because this, if it's an actual hard class reference, then this blueprint, the, the data table would then load, automatically load all of the MPC classes always, which is bad. So we're going to do soft class reference. So we can load it whenever we need it instead. I call this NPC class. These are the ba basic things. Uh, then we want we here, here, this is where we want like different behavior variables and maybe uh, stats like HP armor and stuff like that. Uh, but we're gonna start off like this. It's fine. Let's make a uh, miscellaneous data table. It's gonna be of the type the MPC details we just made. Call it DT and PC details. Open it up. I'm gonna add a new row. So the first row in this data table will be our master MC class. So master MPC. Master MC. This is the master MPC blueprint. And the MC class will be master MC. Perfect. So this is where you can add your logic inside of the MC or in the component or whatever. I'm gonna do it in the component. So on begin play, we're gonna do get data table row. NPC details. Uh, I already have the variable I see, but we're gonna create a new variable called NPC name. And this is the actual name we're gonna use to find uh, the correct row in the data table. So by default, this will be master MPC. I'm gonna plug it in here. We're gonna promote that to a variable. So we have a stored variable for the details. And this for now does not need to be replicated and we can just do this on begin play. And it's gonna uh, trigger for all the clients and everything. But let's collapse this to a function. Just to keep it clean. So if we now go into our master MC, we can see Variable. Uh, we can see we have. This is a little bit annoying, though, actually. I do want to hide this here. There we go, okay. So if we set this to private, only this blueprint itself can manipulate the MC details. And the only time we actually want to manipulate this MC details variable is on startup. Uh, so there we go. 
so as long as we now just set this variable here on the uh, component or wherever you have it to master MPC on begin play it will now look for that row in the data table and then automatically set its own details so that means once we have a lot of MPCs here it's easier to just have all the information in one place instead of having to open a lot of different blueprints find them in the content browser just to change the health or whatever um, and we are only 10 minutes in so let's keep going we want some other th things as well uh, and if you jumped into the if you j just now jumped into the tutorials you probably won't have what i'm showing now but you can see when i hit the mc nothing happens so that's also stuff that we want to load it's like particles and fake effects and stuff is also data that we want to have somewhere but we don't want that in the data table because if we had like hit particles and things inside of this data table we would have to synchronously load them manually which is quite tedious if we're gonna manually like load every little thing so hard reference stuff is gonna be stored inside of the actual mpc as variables instead So we're going to set the category here to NPC details. It's also going to go under MPC details. And that's because I just want to have it under the details here, category. So now we're also going to add uh, hit particles. It's gonna be Niagara system. It's gonna be an array. It's gonna be in the C details. We also want an array of no, actually sound. We want a sound cue that is hit sound and you notice I'm not using soft reference here because in this case since we're asynchronously gonna load like when we spawn this uh, master MPC blueprint or when we spawn an MPC we're gonna load that MPC in and if these are not soft references they will be loaded with the blueprint actor instead with the MC actor at the same time so that's perfect so we don't manually have to load all of the things it sound uh, we also want things like uh, we can do any montage here uh, Also want things like attack animations for instance so you see the the variables that actually require a reference to some some other assets are gonna be inside of the actual blueprint whereas the raw data will be in the data table uh, and just to illustrate what I mean is inside of the MC now uh, can do hit particles random array item and you don't have this function if you uh, or most of you probably have this function but if if you're new to the channel and this is your first video then you won't have this function then I'd advise you to go back and look at previous videos uh, but this is just to show 
how we get the sound and stuff back. See, now I can fill that out here. So for the hit particles, I have blood somewhere. Can't remember what it's called. Maybe I removed it actually. Yeah, I probably need to actually add it back to the project, so let's not do that now. Or actually, let me pause and I will do that. Right, I'm back. Uh, let me just assign some stuff. Alright, so as an example, I have a blood effects pack marketplace. So I'm not going to be able to share that with you, but just use your own. Blood animations, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, or you have plenty of effect stuff on the marketplace. And for the audio, I just got some free sounds from this webpage, pixabay.com. They are licensed to be shared, so I can share these sounds with you. I just got some hit effects there and quickly threw them together into a sound cue, mix them up a bit. So we have this hit impact. Uh, oh, hopefully it wasn't too loud. Uh, and I'm gonna assign that here. Just to make sure it's not too loud, I'm actually gonna lower the volume of it a little bit. Just to make sure I'm not blowing your ears out. And in the MC, we plug that in here. Not the best sounds. It's just for demo, so you can see what's actually going on. Probably get some of my own sounds. Just to make it sound a little bit nicer. But that's the demo stuff that I can at least share with you. Maybe I'll throw together a quick blood particle just so I have some for the demo. Uh, but that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, the basic data for the MPC setup. And the next one will probably add start with the logic. So we're gonna add some roaming behavior and then some chasing the player. And then we're gonna go from there. So see you in the next one. Bye.